All about physics and all about physics by a guy named Richard Hammond. Ham. That sounds tasty. Let's go ahead and start talking about what's the matter. What's the matter, people? It's matter that matters. Get it? Da -da -da. Never mind. Imagine you chopped an apple in half. And let's just assume you have a pretty large knife that if you press a button, it'll just shrink or grow. And you kept chopping in half. Chop, 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 chop. And then it becomes, and then you need a smaller knife. Small, shrink, chop, 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 shrink, chop, 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 shrink, and repeat that. Shrink, 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 and after a few billion years of chopping, shrink, 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 nonstop, you finally like, I have the smallest knife in the universe. And you realize you just went here and found out that you just reached the building block of the universe. The mighty atom. The same that created night itself. So it basically means every time you shrink it, you just took away atoms. And somehow even made it sharp. Still, somehow you made it sharp. And that, and for years, scientists thought that atoms were the smallest things possible. And they're all like, ha, huh, nothing smaller than the atoms. If there's something smaller than the atoms, that means they're more worthy and smarter than us. And someone named Rumford figured out how to split the atom. They're all like, This guy's the smartest guy in the world! His mind transcends all of ours combined. His mind transcends the power of the universe. Should we tell him? No. We should not. And yeah. And then someone found you can chop even further. Oh, a shrink! Chop! Yes! And then a strange new world app opened up. Like, what is matter made of? Apparently, it is literally everything itself. It's made of atoms. It's made of stuff. It's made of, well, like, a hundred million billion 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 years. Something that lasts a hundred million billion 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 years. You heard me correctly. Which is a one with straight five zeros behind it. That's even older than the universe. But some matter doesn't last because there's something called antimatter, which can annihilate it. Also, most of it was already annihilated at the beginning of the universe. And then what is inside of the atom? Well, in fact, after we found out atoms can be shrink chopped, we found out that we can even split it even further into protons, neutrons, and some things whizzing around it called the electron. We called those little things in the middle the nucleus. Also, lots of people thought it was just empty mass literally everywhere. And then we found out that, wait, those protons and neutrons, we can chop them. Shrink, 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 <gasps> chop. And then we found out that we can't chop any further, at least as far as we know. Chop, uh, tongue, 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 tongue. We can't chop any further. And apparently, right now, we have no idea what it would be like. Apparently, lots of people still think that you could turn it into string theory. Like, lots of people still believe in string theory. However... What's after string theory? It's like, not like we can chop forever, right? We're not really sure about that at all because like a different vibration on the string can create different notes, like that little cello or violin over there. So if any vibration on a string can literally create a particle, then what comes after the string? Is the string the smallest thing in the universe? Was there something even smaller? And we really, really want to find something even smaller. Dun, dun, dun. Ah! Break, people! And that's what people seem to think. And we usually use this concept in static electricity. Why do balloons stick to the wall? Because static electricity walls usually have a positive charge. And our hair and uh, usually have a negative charge. And our hair has positive charges because that's just the way it is. And so if you rub it enough and you electrify it, then with the positive charges going up, then you stick on, and then you put the balloon on your head, it'll just stick there for a while, which is also, which will also work for paper and loads of other things too, as long as you're doing a negative energy, of course. And then there are loads of other experiments that we can do, but all I'm gonna say is there are things you can attract together. Like, these stuff right over here are positive. Apparently, cat fur is a positive charge. Except for cotton, it's a neutral. And steel, it's neutral. And then these things here are, have, give out negative charges. And you can use these and attract these. Which is kind of a nice idea, because I can now take away all the fur on my Just kidding, I'm not that cruel. I'm not that cruel. 
And then we have to talk about how magnets work. Magnets, magnets seems to have a very little uh, magnetic field around it. If you spray iron filing, filings around a sheet of paper, you scrunch them up so that they'll be like evenly scattered throughout the whole paper. You put a bar magnet underneath, and then they'll create a field line of magnetic energy. And if you put a compass around the magnet, they'll point towards a specific magnetic field, which is how we actually found out that a magnetic field exists. And no, there are no souls inside magnetic stuff. So that means soul does not exist. Soul is just a way. A soul is just a thing that we made up. Also, it is pretty nice because it is the only way we seem to have explained how human morality works. And then states of matter. Solids are basically like, bear imagine bearing balls. Solids are basically just bearing balls packed very tightly together so they can vibrate but very little. Liquids are just loosely packed together. They still stick together, but they vibrate more heavily. And gases, they're not. No, they're, they're the last third state of matter. And you can literally go, and they're the one, they don't even touch each other. And the fourth state of matter, plasma. But you don't need to know about that. In fact, you can create one in your microwave. Just put in some, I'm not going to tell you how to make a plasma in your microwave because, well, I'm not going to say anything. And don't you dare Google up on YouTube how to create plasma in your microwave because, but believe me, you're just going to cease to have a microwave when you figure it out. Plasma is basically what makes the sun work, and it's also what the lightning is made of. And lightning can literally destroy anything, and don't blame me if your microwave ceases to exist if you start creating plasma. Yikes. It's just ionized gas, alright? It's just ionized gas. And what shape is a raindrop? It's just H2O molecules packed together in a certain way so that it looks like a raindrop. At least that's what we think. At least that's what we think. And it's also the it's also a place where you, it's also a place where you can put weight all around it. And if you spread out the weight of an object, you can literally float it on water. It's not the densest thing we can think of, but we can use it to travel faster at least. And can you walk in custard? Apparently, yes. As long as you keep walking. If you can't, if you don't, if you don't walk on custard, like custard, then it'll just start sinking on you. And quicksand, there's a way you can escape quicksand. It's by staying com perfectly still. The fluid then becomes less, like, as quicksand itself is just something where you sink in, right? Well, all I have to do is stay still. Then it'll just turn back into a solid and it'll slowly push you up. And then from there you can, like, swim back. Swim back. And it's also easier to float in than water, of course, of course. It's just sand, people. It's just sand. You won't die. Yes, you will. Oh, God, who are you? Hmm. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Now, balloons burst. Well, yes, they do, because suddenly air pressure changes because the the air inside the balloon and the, bear, and the air outside the balloon suddenly have a little hole connecting them together, and then they spread out to each other very, very fast. Which is all, and cold air inside contracts if you put the, a, a very fully blown balloon inside a freezer. Which is why balloons seem to scrunch themselves up when you put them in a freezer for a bit of a time. And then when you put them back outside, they'll start being warm again and they'll start acting like a balloon again. And that's pretty weird. <laughs> and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Hunter and Show. I hope to see you guys soon in another episode. And until then, if you're not out, peace. Ah!